ladies and gentlemen, it is your host again, Johnny To Be and Hopeless Romance. And we're here to give you another fine fan fiction overdrive incident, chapter three, Old Friends Returns. Now, uh, the art belongs to you. That's right. And uh, the music belongs to authors like the Ivory Brothers or uh, Star Trek's Paramount Pictures or the Walt Disney Corporation. Whoever owns the music uh, belongs to Walt Disney and their respected composers. Now, here we go. Chapter 3, Old Friend Returns. Next morning, the caked Suzette Gazette poured on the front page that Shere Khan was slowly going bankrupt and he had to sell his factories to none other than Scrooge and McDuck. Elvis had left Molly crying, saying he had other places to go and other people to see. He wanted to pursue his music career. Don't worry, Bunnos. There are other guys uh, out there. Besides, you're almost 18. It's too early for you to get hunkered down now. And to see anybody, Blue said, as being the father uh, fatherly figure he was. Think so, Pablo Bear? Molly said with a sniffle in his ear. Blue wiped her tear with a Kleenex. Yes, I do, Button Nose. Now, why don't you concentrate on finishing high school and being my new ace navigator? Thanks, Daddy, Molly giggled. Mmm. Uh, good morning, Molly. Good morning, Button Butterball, Rebecca said cheerfully. Then they reached to give e each other a kiss. Mmm, Becky, that was delicious, Blue said seductively. Oh, you. Maybe later tonight we can have some fun, Becky said. Ha <laughs> ha, Becky, it's a date! Then there was a knock on the door. Molly went to go open it. Hey, Kit, Molly said. Hey, Molly, Kit replied. Well, if it isn't the newlyweds, Blue said. I thought you two were off the Negro Falls, Blue said. We are, but we thought we would uh, say goodbye and thank you before we headed out, Sandy said. You're always welcome here, Sandy, Rebecca said. Thank you, Rebecca. You're so sweet, Sandy said. Call me Mom. You're a part of this family now, after all, Rebecca said. Uh, okay, thanks, Mom, Sandy blushed when she said. I wanted to thank you personally, Papa Bear, for giving me $5,000. Now, when we get back and we have enough, enough for our down pay payment for our own cargo plane, Kit said. And if you ever need a job, you can always work for us, Rebecca said. Thanks, Mom. Kiv Kit gave Becky a hug. Then Sandy gave Becky a hug while Kit and Blue shared a brief hug. Then they both hugged Molly goodbye and left for Nigger Falls. Uh, uh, Molly then left for school. Good luck, little britches, Blue said as they are leaving out the door. Thanks, Papa Bear, he shouted outside. Blue gave Molly a kiss on the head, or Rebecca gave Molly her lunch for school as she was leaving to catch her school bus. Now that we're alone, how about you and me go upstairs and play, Re Rebecca said seductively. It'd be my pleasure, Blue said. Then the phone rang. Damn it! The phone rang some more. Let it ring, Becky. Let it ring. No, we have to start work, she said. Okay, but next time, let it ring, Blue said. All right, next time, Rebecca smirked. Rebecca grabs the phone. Hire for hire. If you're buying, we're flying. In a trademark greeting. Hello, this is Mr. Feather. This is Mrs. Featherby for Scrooge McDuck. I am here for to hire on you on behalf of Mr. McDuck. We transport machine equipment and boxes of tools need to replace the old equipment and tools that former factory Shere Khan used to own over there in Cape Set, Duck said on the phone. Yes, we'd be delighted to help you and deliver the equipment from Duckburg to Mr. McDuck's newly acquired factories. Um, how much are we talking in uh, payment? Mr. McDuck will pay $5,000 per delivery plus $2,000 for gas and expenses. Rebecca's eyes widen. Really? Uh, how many deliveries are we talking, and when is he ready to receive us? Rebecca was looking at her s schedule and looking at her calendar. Mr. McDuck wants you here immediately, and we'll discuss whatever with you in detail about, about how many deliveries there will be. 
you remembers what you pulled on him back in 39, but is willing to forgive. He says, one slip up like that and you'll be fine. Are that clear? Yes, uh, perfectly. Good. Be here at 3.30 sharp for more information. That is all. The but, Rebecca looks at the clock and says 9.15 a.m. Duckburg is 3,000 miles away, she said while hanging up the phone. Click. Blue! Yes, honey lips? Make sure uh, there's plenty of special fuel for overdrive and plenty of regular gasoline in the regular engines. Why? What do we need overdrive for? Just get Wildcat's help. We don't have much time. I've got to cancel all our appointments for the next few days. Perhaps the next few weeks. Why? What are we doing? Just do it. I'll explain on the way to Duckburg. Duckburg? Now, as Rebecca was uh, taping, thank you, sweetie. As Becky smiled as she was still his boss. Blue ran outside to call Wildcat it's for help. Wildcat! Wildcat! Meanwhile, Becky canceled all her appointments and locked up the house and locked, locked for business. Meanwhile, on the USS Enterprise, Stardate, unknown, the bridge of the Enterprise was all shook up after the explosion that had occurred. The power went back on. Ooh, Captain Kirk woke up. Is everyone all right? Damage report, uh, Scotty, Kirk asked. Everyone on board appears to be an older gym. Minor cuts and scratches that my staff can't handle without me. Uh, Jim, Dr. McCoy says. The ship is in order, Jim, but the warp drive is damaged, and we need to repair it as soon as we can if we want to get home. Damn! Spock, where are we, to be exact? I'm certain at this point, Captain. The explosion must have sent us light years away, and without warp drive, we'll be stuck wherever it is we are. Sir, I'm picking up low radio transmission frequencies. They haven't been used in centuries, but I'm receiving them, Aurora said. Can you pinpoint the source, Lieutenant? Somewhere in that nearby solar system about four parsecs away, Uhura said. Captain, listen to this. I'm his navigator. <laughs> Overdrive the entire way. Tell me, foolish flyer, what is your name? So I can carve it on your tombstone. <laughs> Name's Baloo. And me, Kit Cloud. Cedar Gout. Captain, tracing that radio transmission confirms that the vehicle must have warp capabilities. They may have the ne tools necessary to help us repair our warp, I said. Sir, those messages to reach us would have been several years old if they're that far away, Mr. Sulu said. Well then, we must go to that planet and see if they can help us, Kirk said. Damn it, Jim! We don't know what the hell we're dealing with! We don't know what's out there! We don't know what to do! We shouldn't be doing anything that we don't know what we're dealing with, Dr. McCoy said. Calm yourself, Doctor. They have warp drive capabilities, therefore we shall introduce ourselves. I hope you know what you're doing, damn it! McCoy says. Kirk turns to Mr. Chekhov. Mr. Chekhov, how long will it take us to get to that planet? It flimples? Three weeks, sir. Then, instead of the Russian accent. Right then, Mr. Sulu, follow her as transmissions and set course for that planet. Aye, sir, Sulu said. Sir, your afternoon coffee and report for you to sign, a young lady with dirty blonde hair and gray eyes said. Thank you, Lieutenant Calloway, is it? Captain, when can I go on an away mission, Alicia asked. I've been on the ship for four years now, and I've never had a chance of adventure. Being on the ship all cooped up is fun and all, but I want more in my life. I would like to experience something exciting or something different at once in my life. Please, Captain, please. Captain Cook looked at her puppy dog eyes and her cute face. Kirk smiled. Lieutenant, is it? Uh, aren't you a, an expertise in foreign cultures? Yes, sir. Kirk then smiled. Okay, Lieutenant. Lieutenant. Lieutenant, what? I forgot your name. Alicia, she interrupted. Alicia, you may go with us on the away mission. Thank you, thank you, Captain, Alicia yelled. And that is the conclusion of this chapter of Old Friend's Return of Overdrive Vincent. I am Giant 2B, and you are... Hopeless Romance. And we hope to see you very soon. Thank you very much.